All right. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for Lights, Camera, Act. Don, <laughs> see Act On in action. Um, we're so glad that you joined us today for this live demo webinar. Um, you're going to get a great peek at what Act On can do for your business to help you grow from idea to impact in record time. So um, thank you guys all for joining and get ready for a really great demonstration um, by two of our best and brightest at Act On uh, Solutions Engineer, Mike Felix and Andy Porter. They're gonna walk you through the platform and show you everything that Act On can do. Um, but before we get going, just a couple of housekeeping. We are recording today, so I will be sending out the recording um, by the end of the day. And then um, we also have Q&A and chat enabled. So if you have any questions or any comments along the way, please don't hesitate. Let us know uh, what you're thinking. If you have any follow-ups or you want us to go deeper into anything, that's why we're here today. Um, and then if there are any additional um, feedback, we will have a survey after this presentation as well. Um, so please, if you have the chance, um, do the survey for us. It helps us make these presentations um, the best they can be. So with that, I will let you guys take it away. And um, I hope you guys enjoy this presentation. Well, I appreciate that, Kelsey. And uh, as Kelsey mentioned, I'm I'm Andy Porter. I'm the Director of Solutions Consultants here at Acton. And really today, as, as we're going to go through, the, the agenda is going to be really walking through kind of what marketing automation is designed to do. Um, and then I'm going to kick it over to, to Mike for the exciting part of the, the conversation. Um, and then we'll, we'll answer one quick question of why act on uh, as far as the marketing automation, which should tie into a lot of the things that, that Mike has talked about today. But starting with marketing automation and, and kind of the point of marketing automation is, is really to make sure that you are using the tools that are available to drive the most efficient, scalable growth for yourself. And so um, as you have all of these different things in a, a marketing perspective from uh, capturing new leads, from, from gathering um, information from your customers, the more that you can automate, the more you can start to reflect on what's going on and, and what's actually working for you. And that will allow you to move forward and to drive the actual uh, results that you need to, to get in your, your business, as opposed to filling your day with all of the, the tasks that need to be completed um, where you don't have time to iterate, you don't have time to ideate and to, to look at other ways to um, improve the results that you're getting. And then finally, making sure that you are aligning your, your data with the, the sales team, aligning what's going on from marketing and sales uh, to make sure that you have a uh, cooperative and collaborative experience between the marketing and sales organizations to avoid that, that sort of finger pointing that often uh, ends up happening between those organizations and make sure that when you are passing data over to the sales team, it's something that they treat as, as gold. They, they treat as something that is, is going to be very valuable for them. And so really where we're, we're diving into this is, is trying to automate as much as possible. And um, this just gives you kind of an idea of the, the overview of um, where marketers are typically playing. So you, you have your, your, this left side is the, the get customers. And that's the, the whole point. And I think a lot of marketers are really focused on that get customers. How do I get those new leads and then drive them into that existing customer base? Um, and then a lot of marketers, I think, forget about this keep and grow aspect of things. And so really thinking about what sort of thought leadership, what sort of education can we provide to our customers to make sure that they're A, set up for success when they do become customers, uh, but B, move into more of that advocate stage where we can start to add on additional features or additional products or additional uh, services that, that we're offering to our customers um, or get those customers to refer or recommend some uh, of their, their friends, the related businesses, um, internal stakeholders that might be valuable uh, to make sure that you are, are continuing to uh, feed that pipeline with now better qualified leads because they've now been recommended and told, hey, this works. Um, from somebody that they trust. And how you really do that is, is really looking at um, these different layers of the, the get, keep, and grow. So there's a lot of tools and, and tasks that you, you can uh, 
feed into this. But really what you want to make sure that, that you're doing is in that get stage, how do we get that those metrics for getting that conversion from anonymous to known? How do we get those those leads into the hands of, of sales and converted? How do we scale the operation? And then moving forward with it, the keep, keep and grow, I won't go through all of these, but how do we make sure that we are onboarding people successfully and, and making sure that they are actually using um, what we are providing to them, whether that be a product or a service um, or a software? Um, and how do we, we move that forward uh, with that? And so as my goes into the the demo today there're really going to be three mainish chapters that he's going to to talk about. Um, and it's going to start with that get aspect. How do we get those leads? How do we improve that lead acquisition? Um, and then the the keep aspect, how do we actually con- increase the conversion throughout the funnel? What are the things that we can do to personalize the experience? And then ultimately growing, how do we make sure that we are looking at um, creating delightful customer experiences, driving brand loyalty, um, and making sure that the the services that we're offering are actually meeting what our customers are looking for. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and and stop my rant about uh, what marketing automation is and pass it over to to Mike for the exciting part of the the conversation here. All right. Sweet, sweet. Thank you for that, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Let me get situated here. So, um, there's a lot, there's a lot that could be covered here. Um, if I covered everything, we would be on here for about four to five hours. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to glaze over a lot. And I'm, I want to start with saying that if you do want a, a more in-depth demonstration, or you want to have a conversation around how to sort of ideate on how you can get the most out of act on, you can always set up a demonstration directly with us. And, um, and that conversation can go a number of ways so that you can get the most out of the platform and just marketing automation altogether. Now, on this first page, this first starting page, um, I, I normally bring this up just to show that there's a lot that's inside of the platform. There's, there's uh, web form builders, um, landing page builders, um, email composers, event and webinar integrations, automated program list management. So there's a lot to cover. I'm going to be touching on a few of these, but I'm going to be mostly aligning this with our with the theme of getting, keeping, and growing um, customers. Now, on the topic of getting customers, it's always good to know where where these customers are coming from, what they're doing, and how they're engaging with their marketing assets. So we do equip all of our customers with what's known as a, a beacon. This is a script that would be globally installed across your marketing assets, particularly your website, so that you can see what's happening. You can see what your anonymous prospects are doing, and you can also see what your known prospects are doing. And the aim here is to bridge that gap. The aim is to get as many anonymous prospects to known prospects as possible so that you can optimize um, the utility of your website. Now, the best way to do that, of course, is through um, leveraging advanced form capabilities. So um, the form builder that we have directly inside of Acton is a WYSIWYG. It's a what you see is what you get builder. So you can drag modules directly into the platform. You can style it as you'd like. Uh, we have a lot of customers that, Im- that bring in their CSS for their website so that they can, um, so that they could have the the form adopt whatever parent styling you have on your on your website or your brand. But the biggest key uh, takeaways from the website builder here is how intelligent it can provide you, uh, or what insights it can provide you, so that you can have intelligent marketing capabilities on capabilities on the back end. So one one uh, element here is conditional elements inside of the forms. So you can change uh, follow up inputs based off of what the prospect or what that uh, what that particular visitor has already indicated. So if they if they come in and they indicate that they're interested in say uh, advanced social media, um, you don't have to ask follow on in irrelevant questions. You can have your your inputs be most relevant based off of what they've what they've indicated. Now, the other side to your form builder that that's important is to be able to progressively build on what insights or what information you have on a prospect. So we have uh, progressive profiling embedded directly inside of the form builder so that you can be tactful and tactical on how you're capturing inputs. So let's say inside of your database, you already have a known prospect and you know what the, you know what their first name is. You know what their last name is. You know what their email address is. Um, you can make your forms less daunting by either hiding those inputs or pre-filling them so that the propensity for these visitors to, to give you more information is dramatically higher. 
Now, all of these forms can be embedded directly onto uh, landing pages, or they could also be embedded directly inside of your website. Now, as as our prospects are inputting information, it's important to know what's going on and, and how that's actually performing over time. So our analytics platform provides you with the ability to see uh, real-time performance across your forms, your landing pages, your media, your email, um, and other assets that's out there that, that's triggering different automated campaigns. Now, what you're seeing here is our is a live board specific to your forms and landing pages, and it's providing you a lot of insights into your form views, form submissions, conversion rates. Um, it's providing you some insights on perf uh, top performing forms, uh, where these inputs are coming from throughout the day, and it's also giving you some insight into some of these channels. Um, many of these are very customizable, so you're able to input tiles based off of what information is most relevant to you. But I think the biggest takeaway from our analytics dashboard that I like to highlight is the fact that we've changed how you interface with your data. So not only do you have the ability to filter, uh, to filter what you see, um, but you can engage with your data uh, dramatically differently. So if I wanted to add some filters, I can come in and I can adjust the, the, the period of time or the range. I can adjust what form information I, I particularly want to look at. Um, but I can also avoid having to create what's known as a Frankenstein of reports to be able to get the insights that I need. So in the past, if, if, a, if a stakeholder asked you a question about, um, you know, say, you know, hey, Mike, tell me, why did, why did my form submissions go down by 85.7% this past week? Um, in the past, I would have to look through five different reports and I would have to sort of derive insights from it. But we've, we've integrated AI into multiple elements inside of our analytics platform so that you can get your answers directly delivered to you and you don't have to go and search for it. So if I were to look at this particular data point here and I see that I do have a dramatic increase, we have something known as a change analysis that gives you the ability to um, leverage AI and AI is looking through all of your real-time data to be able to generate insights on what's driving those changes. So this change could have been positive, but in this case, this, this change was negative. So if there are insights to, um, to be seen, then it'll show you. If there are not insights to be seen, then, then, then it will tell you that there weren't significant changes that are driving things to be presented. But in this case, I have a couple of different uh, things here to see. I have a, I have a, a website, book a demo. Um, I, have a, I, have, I have an assessment. I have a client survey that was aligned with CES. And I also have some syndication information. And a lot of this is temporal. So because they were aligned with a specific event that occurred, um, that's the reason why my, why my submission count was down so much. So I'm able to have an answer very quickly versus having to go and search for it. And if a stakeholder did ask me a particular uh, question about my data, um, I'm able to immediately find answers. And I think one of the, the nice things here is, as Mike's talking about this is um, being able to get the answers that don't necessarily mean negative things. So yes, we had a, a huge drop in the submissions, but there are natural explanations for those things because we had a push for, we wanted to get some uh, customer engagement surveys out and we did a, a single push for that. We had some content syndication that was a single campaign that we're running. So it's not a, a situation where we're actually um, missing the boat or, or we're not engaging with our customers in the right way. It, it's actually, giving us some insights into, hey, our customers are actually engaging in these one-time sort of uh, content syndication. So let's look into this a little bit deeper and let's try to see, are we getting the right kind of customer engagement or the right kind of prospects or right kind of submissions when we do these things to take that to the, the next step? And so now you're starting to iterate and ideate on what you can do next as opposed to panicking as to, hey, I've got a bunch of uh, less form submissions, I got to go figure out how to get more people to submit forms. Right, right, absolutely. And to take it a step further, um, to take it a step further, uh, I mentioned that we provide you with the ability to engage with your data differently. Um, we even provide you with the ability to have a prompt and this prompt enables you to um, engage with your data through natural language queries. And this will look at a, it'll look at a particular statement. It'll out, it'll identify a bound. It'll identify a particular set of data that it needs to assess. And it'll also look at what metrics need to be, um, need to be analyzed in order to provide you with an answer to the question that, to the question or query that you have. 
So in this case, I, I, I typed into our prompt my top 10 message titles that had the highest click to open rate uh, within the last 30 days. So there's a lot to there's a lot to pull here. The first thing that you see is that it provides you with an answer. So this is going off of your real-time data. Um, if I look at this answer and I say, hey, well, I have to deliver this information to a couple of different stakeholders. I have to give this to senior leadership. I also have to give this to my to uh, someone that's that's uh, that's on my team. If this visual isn't fully representative of the message that you want to deliver, you can come in and modify what data points is driving that visual um, or that that report or that answer. But you can also totally change the visual altogether. So you can make this a pie graph. You can make this a donut. Um, you could totally change how this visual is, is rendered without having to have um, separate business or data intelligence software in order to create these visuals. Now, when you're looking at when you're looking at your data, um, there's a couple of different phases that that you should be um, analyzing your data from. We we had a discussion about anonymous visitors converting to known through forms and uh, and other assets, but it's really good to be able to 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 see. Um, how these visitors are, are transitioning throughout these different phases and being able to have a certain level of insight into what's driving, what performance um, metrics or what objectives you have for your campaigns. And a lot of this comes through, through personalization and through being able to, to, uh, to set yourself up for, for marketing success. Now, when it comes to uh, personalizing your personalizing your, your experience for your prospects, a lot of that happens through segmentation. So you have a number of lists with, which are relatively fixed in nature, but then you have these dynamic segments that are, that are based off of specific information or specific um, data that you have on these contacts and what automation you want to trigger based off of what you're essentially privy to. So in this case here, I have a segment that's configured based off of um, me knowing what industry certain uh, prospects are in, um, me knowing that they've engaged with a with a specific web page within the past 30 days. And I can also see or, or, or create a segment for um, certain characteristics about the account or information that's coming from my CRM that's indicating that a prospect is um, is ha has an open opportunity within a certain range of a projected close date. All of this enables you to fine tune what your messaging is, how you're targeting your, your prospects and the timeliness of that, of that automation. Now, if I were to take this a step further, we've, we've invested in embedding um, AI across the board, not just from generating content, but also in assessing your data. And from a segmentation standpoint, we also provide you with the ability to um, to generate insights on your audiences based off of uh, different things that's happening on the back end. So uh, within my segmentation uh, dashboard, I have the ability to see um, whether or not I have disengaged segments that I may want to create a suppression um, segment against to be able to not overload them with messaging that they may not want to see. I have the ability to see whether or not I have segments that um, that are indicated where we should re-engage or I also have the ability to um, generate certain insights that's based off of activity that I'm not seeing on the front end, but the AI is looking at patterns in activity on the back end. So I can create segments based off of some of these different insights. And this will take into account data that's coming over from CRM as well as the behavioral data to try to find ways for you to maximize the, the audiences that you have. So, for example, one that, that I've seen is, is a consistent audience um, of, of really passive engagers. So they, they've opened our emails, they've engaged with our emails, but they haven't actually filled out a form or they haven't downloaded um, any of our content. So we don't have that next layer. How do we take that person from somebody who's willing to read our, our content, but not willing to go that extra step of, of engaging at that more active level. And so you can start to, to ideate and, and come up with, um, with ways to have different campaigns that are focused on those audiences. Or to Mike's point, we've got those disengaged audiences. Maybe we need to use that as a suppression, or maybe we need to slow down the cadence with which we're contacting with those folks. So we make sure that we're actually hitting them 
in the, the cadence that they want to, to receive the messages and not hurting our likelihood to deliver messages to the, the ISPs that, that they work with. Right, right. Thank you for that. Now, um, when it comes to personalizing this, this experience, um, the biggest thing that you would think of is, is what messaging they're receiving. So we've made dramatic changes to our email composer um, based off of feedback, but also based off of things that, that we're seeing happening within the industry. There were some areas where we've, we've, moved, we've moved a few things, but we've also optimized your experience to make it easier to create an email without compromising on capabilities. So the first, this first page here is everything that you're able to configure um, for a message prior to your recipient's opening. So you're able to fully personalize your subject line, your preview text. You're able to embed um, uh, personalization directly inside of the subject line without having to know short code or, or, or anything like that. Um, and you can also add some fallback text. So in the event that you have a certain number of characters that you want to have within your subject line optimized to um, to certain email clients, you can create some fallback text that will enable you to um, that will enable you to not have to uh, fully uh, fully uh, you know consume the majority of your preview. Now, our designer is a uh, an advanced WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get, builder. If you want to drag content directly inside of the builder, it's really just a matter of grabbing one of these modules and, and directly applying it inside of the email builder. We've made it extremely easy for you to be able to craft a beautiful email without having to know how to code or having to know HTML or CSS or anything like that. Now, inside of each one of these rich text boxes, you have the ability to fully personalize and customize all of the text. If you want to bold, italicize, um, underline any element, you can do so. Uh, the same way you can personalize your subject line preview text, you can drop in uh, specific fields from your contact rec contacts record directly inside of the inside of the text box. And you can also add in various assets uh, directly inside of the inside of the text as well. So you don't have to memorize landing page URLs. You don't have to memorize URLs for certain media files. You can directly access every asset that you're creating inside of Acton from this builder um, without having to navigate navigate to other to other screens. Now, outside of rich text, you have the ability to bring in various buttons. Now, when you think of a message. Buttons are like a primary um, like call to action module within certain messages. So typically you would think that a button is just going to merely drive you to a URL, but we've added in a number of other capabilities to make it easier for you to be able to get uh, contacts to engage with your emails. For one, you can still drive them to a URL and you can indicate what that URL is. Or again, you can go back to your asset links to drive them directly to a particular landing page or other asset but we also provide you with the ability to create um, a, a, a populated email. So within some email clients, you have the ability to click on a link. And what it will do is what it will do is it will open up a new email and populate your mail to your subject line and your body, making it very easy for you to be able to receive responses from your um, from your from your audience. If you want to have this be a call or an SMS, that tell code or that SMS code can be directly integrated directly inside of that call to action button, again, making it very easy for you to be able to create these call to actions that's tailored to how you want your prospects to engage with your messaging. Now, we've always provided you with the ability to, to create beautiful um, responsive emails. So if you have various columns or rows inside of your messages, um, if, if, it were, if it were to be presented onto a mobile device, it will automatically stack. So that's, that's relatively common. But we've added in a number of uh, capabilities to help you with having more control over how it's presented on mobile. So not only can you edit or modify your content directly from the mobile view, but you also have the ability to adjust how these various columns are stacked in mobile view. So let's say you would have a layout that had some of these alternating images in this manner. I can, I can select a row and I can choose how this should stack in my mobile form. So I can either modify, uh, or I can change how it's stacked or I could hide that row altogether. Again, providing you with greater control over how 
responsive your emails are, but also how it's presented across devices. You have the ability to, to also fully customize the, the design in a, in a number of areas. Um, you can modify all of the padding, you can modify your backgrounds, but you can also uh, render certain design elements inside of the builder, saving you on time, but also ensuring that, uh, again, you're, you're driving your audience to engage with your messaging the way that you want to. Now, in the event that you have, let's say, a video, a YouTube video or Vimeo that you want to embed inside of a message, in the past, you would have had to uh, download your thumbnail, upload your thumbnail, or even create an overlay. We have the ability for you to be able to do all of that simply from having that video link. So by simply, by simply inputting my YouTube video link into this prompt here, it not only generated the title from the open graph content, but it also brought in my thumbnail and it put an overlay showcasing or, or indicating that that's something to click on and that'll drive them directly to that video on their, on their email client. Now we've embedded AI inside of the platform on the data front, but we've also embedded it into the email builder so that you can generate content directly inside of the email builder. So if I wanted to uh, create a full email, e uh, email headline, or even a paragraph, I can come in and modify what my marketing or my content intent would be, what the tone of that actual content would be. And also I could add in some global elements, my company name, contact you, a company URL, and a little excerpt on what type of content I want to generate. And what this is doing is it's interfacing with open AI. It has an optimized prompt to be able to provide you with content that's specifically tailored to the type of um, content that you want to embed inside of your email. So again, it saves you a tremendous amount of time, but provides you with a tremendous amount of capabilities to, uh, to leverage an ever-growing resource moving forward in, in the marketing space. Now, when it comes to sending emails, one big thing that we did uh, was we moved the who to the end. Um, so uh, when you're sending, when you're uh, creating your sending details, this is where you would specify who you want to send your your email to. So you can send it to an entire list of segment, or you could choose specific contacts to send your message to. Now, when it comes to sending the, the when, you could send right away. You could send at a particular date and time, and you could specify whether or not you want to have that sent um, based off of the time zone. Uh, you could send over a period of time. So this is where you can select a date range, and you could um, send your messaging. It'll split up your messages, your recipients, across a particular range so that you can optimize your, your deliverability and also um, ensure that your... Um, your messages are, are making it to inboxes. Now to take it one step further, we also provide you with the ability to leverage all of the behavioral data that's being generated on your prospects um, and optimizing your sending based off of what's most relevant to them. So it's not just based off of when they've previously engaged or previously opened messages. It's based off of all of the information that's been generated on that particular prospect. So just to step back for a moment to, to show you what, what I actually mean by that, um, each one of these known prospects in the system will receive what's known as a contact report. So this is providing you with a, with a glimpse of what is happening with that, with that prospect, what they've engaged with, emails that they've opened, clicked on, website pages that they visited, search criteria that brought them to your marketing assets, and many other data points um, that that provide you with insight into certain patterns of their engagement as well. And all of this is being considered when it comes to when the optimal time would be to send them a message. Now, when you think of automation, you not only think of messages, but you also think of the timeliness of the message, the, the, the different triggers that's, that, that, that's causing the message to be sent to that particular prospect or that particular contact at a certain time. So our automated journey builder provides you with the ability to create that logic around your automated sequences and your, and your engagement with these prospects. So in this case here, a, a, a journey has some type of starting point. That could be a prospect enters into a, into a segment or they engage with a certain marketing asset. They submitted a form. Um, they clicked a particular link. Something triggered that, that, uh, that contact to enter into this 
particular journey. And you can outline a sequence of activities, or, or in this case, a sequence of steps that's happening for that particular prospect. In this case, we're waiting for a period of time or we're waiting until 8 a.m. to send or to have them proceed through the journey. And then we're going to send them a message. Now, each one of these waiting periods have, has some sort of basis behind it. We can have it be based off of a period of time, a specific date, or it could be based off of some activity that they've executed or some segment that they're, that they're now residing in. When it comes to sending out messages, we can have these messages be conditional based off of uh, a particular segment or condition that they're in, or we can, we can A-B test directly inside of the automated journey, providing you with the ability to send out the optimal message based off of what's being, um, what's being engaged with the most. Now, if I, if I were to click into one of these plus signs, this provides you with the full breadth of what you're capable of adding inside of these journeys. So you can send a message, you can, you can even send an SMS. You can of course wait, you can have some type of branch logic so that you could say, hey, this contact needs to go through, um, go through this branch in the event that this particular condition is true. You can, you can modify what is being populated inside of that contacts record. You can change fields, move them to different segments, or in many cases, we have a lot of customers that have alerts that are sent to certain stakeholders when contacts make it into a certain part of that marketing pipeline, which creates even greater alignment between your marketing activities and also your sales activities as well. We also have the ability to, for you to directly engage with other platforms, whether it be your CRM or other, or other interfaces via API, via webhooks, or through our native integrations inside of the platform. Now, Mike has gone over a lot here, and there's so much more that we can we can talk about in in terms of act on. But uh, knowing that we we don't have um, enough time to cover everything, we'll we'll go ahead and stop it here. If you do want to go into more depth, uh, feel free to uh, to set up some time with us. Kelsey will be sending out materials um, after the the conversation here to to go into to more depth on on um, what you can do to to get a, a deeper demo. Absolutely. Um, so we are at time. So thank you all for joining us today. I'm sorry we didn't get to everybody's questions, but if you do have additional questions, I'll send out an email where you can um, feel free to reply back to and we'll be happy to chat with you um, on anything that you want to know more about. Um, thank you all for joining us today. I hope that was a great snapshot of what Acton can do for you. And if you want to learn more, as Andy said, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.